I'm sitting here thinking about travel for the next year. It's a new year, 2024, and I am dying to get going places. And as I'm scrolling through things, looking through options, and trying to figure out what's ahead, it crossed my mind. There are certain things that will save you a lot of money when you're traveling. So here are my top five tips for traveling on a budget. Tip number one is the longer you stay somewhere, usually the bigger discount you can get. If you're going somewhere for a few days, you're just paying a nightly rate. But as soon as you get up to a week, Sometimes you can find places that have a discount because you're there for a whole week. Sometimes it takes two weeks, sometimes it takes a month. Over a month, you can get places discounted like crazy. So if you're traveling somewhere and you are trying to decide if you're going to use one place as a home base and then you're going to do like more day trips from that one location or if you're going to try and move around as you go and kind of go to the places that you're seeing and staying there too. An option that might save you money that you might not have thought would save you money is potentially staying in the same place if you can get a discount for staying somewhere longer and as long as the places you want to go are accessible from that location that might be a good option for saving you money while traveling. If you're doing long stays, so if you want to go somewhere and stay a long time, which is, I think in general, long stays over four weeks. At that point, lots of places will give you really good discounts. I've gotten like 50 to 70% discounts on places on like Airbnb that I went and stayed for over four weeks, which is a great way to help the budget when you're traveling because accommodation is such a huge expense especially when you're solo traveling it's not quite as hard to stomach when you're traveling with other people because then it's like the same amount of money whether you have one person or multiple people there but when you're by yourself and you're paying for one person to stay somewhere it is a lot of money per night per person and so Finding ways to save money on accommodation is always a good thing. Point number two is points. Pick one place and accrue points. Traveling, when you're traveling, it's so easy to get points for things, whether it's on a credit card, whether it's airline points, whether it's like a hotel chain points, whether it's like a booking agency points, a booking website, Airbnb, like pick a place that will give you points for booking things and then book as much as you can on your trip with that place because chances are by the end of your trip you will have enough points to do something with it's never really efficient and doesn't really feel like a payoff when you are only booking one thing and you book with something that gives you points and then they do give you points for whatever you book but then you only booked one thing, so then you don't get enough points to do anything with. But when you're traveling on a budget, if you can figure out how to, figure out what will give you the most points that you have access to, book as much as you can through one thing so that you get points there. The more points you get from a certain place, like the more you can do with that. And I paid for a lot of hotels with points from a credit card. And that can save you a lot of money because it's essentially like free money that you don't have to have in your bank account, but you can use like you have in your bank account for certain things for traveling. And so it can help make your trip cheaper or rather just stretch the money you have better. Point number three is pick wisely, not cheaply. There is a difference between purchasing something because you really want it and purchasing something because it's cheap and especially when you're traveling you just need to be really aware of what cheap options you're going with because a lot of the times the cheap options are non-refundable 
and that's why they're cheaper and that is fine if you are a person whose travel plans are set in stone however i have found that while you're traveling even if you have a plan and you know how you want things to go a lot of things come up along the way sometimes you're not feeling well the weather's bad like all of these things happen and the refund policy for things isn't always like money back it could be will reschedule your tour if it's a tour they might reschedule instead of refund you and all of those things are really important to know before you start booking things that are cheap and look like a deal and are a deal but if the price difference is only a few dollars between refundable and non-refundable and there is any chance that something might happen or you might change your mind or the plan might change. I have found, and it took me a long time to figure this out <laughs> because I like saving money. I like booking the cheaper thing and I have a hard time booking something that is more expensive when I know that I could be booking something less expensive. So I totally get it. However, I have found that it is always better to book the refundable option rather than the non-refundable option if the difference in price isn't that much. If there is a huge difference in price, then another thing to try and check is if the price will be that different if you wait until like the day before to book it. Do you have to book it ahead of time that far in advance? where there's a lot of factors that could play in and change your mind and also like change if it works for you or not anymore. If you book it last minute, will it really be more expensive or will it be filled up? Is there a reason why you have to book it ahead? Or are you just booking it ahead to try and be on top of things? But then if you book a non-refundable option and your plans change, then you're stuck. Cheaper options feel like a good deal, but the difference between paying for a refundable option and paying for a non-refundable option that you end up sick and not able to use or, you know, for whatever unforeseen circumstance, unable to use, and then you waste all that money. I don't think that the non-refundable option is actually cheaper in the long run if you're averaging out everything that you spend. Point number four is flexibility saves money. So one of the well-known travel secrets that I think is pretty universally a fact is that if you book things for certain days of the weeks or certain times of day or certain time of year, it's cheaper than other times. There is high season, there is low season, there are more popular times, there are less popular times, there are heavy travel days, there are light travel days, and it really depends on where you're going, what you're doing, what you're looking at. But if you don't have to travel at a very specific time in order to like fit it into your schedule if you have flexibility there it is worth looking up ways that you can save money by choosing what day to take your flight or what day you want to do certain activities because you can save a lot of money by taking the off time or the less popular day and that really depends on your schedule and how much of a pinch you're in. But if you're looking to save money and stretch your budget, then being flexible will save you money. My last point, point number five, is research before you go. So part of the cost of doing things cheaply is normally time. Sometimes cheaper things just have you at like a cheaper flight might have you at a longer layover. But getting somewhere and wanting to do things cheaply requires time, 
in preparation ahead of time in order to know what you're getting into because you don't want to just get there, take the best option that you see, and spend whatever money it costs to do that. By finding the most cost-efficient options for things, you do have to do your research ahead of time. Some places just cost more money than other places, so it's really important when you're on a budget to have an accurate expectation of how much money visiting a place is going to cost. Now, you can obviously save money certain places by going to restaurants less often and picking up snacks from like bakeries or grabbing food from a grocery store as a great way to save money. Also, if you're going on tours or something like that, it is normally way cheaper to bring your own snacks along, bring your own food along than relying on finding something along the way. And all of that just takes advanced planning. You have to know where a grocery store is. You have to know what time you're leaving for all your things. You have to know what you'll have access to and you just have to be on top of it. But if you're willing to be on top of it, then that is a great way to save some money. There's also things like transport once you get somewhere, getting around. Knowing ahead of time the most cost-effective way to get around will save you a lot of money. If it's close enough that you can walk places, like that's free. If there is like a subway or a metro system, normally that is a really cost-efficient way. Buses, in some places where it's just cheaper to live, something like Uber or Lyft or whatever the country's equivalent is, isn't necessarily expensive and might be a lot less of a hassle than trying to figure out any sort of local public transit. Or if you're staying for a long time, maybe a good option would be to just rent like a motorbike or a car. Because in some places, those are the budget options. As you're researching something like transport, you can also be thinking about when am I going to need this? What are you planning on doing there, which is going to require you to have transportation? In some places, it'll be a lot. In other places, it won't be as much. And so just knowing that in your head and having an idea of how much you're expecting to spend on something like transportation, which is necessary to do all the things you want to do on your trip, but also can be a major expense if you're not careful about how you do it or you're not informed about the best ways beforehand. So putting in the time ahead of time to research what you're getting yourself into, where you're going, what things cost, what's the cheap way of doing things, and what is the not cheap way of doing things. If you're trying to travel on a budget, thinking about these things before you get there is going to save you money because you're not going to have to try things, realize that it's so expensive, and then search for a different way of doing things that's cheaper. There are so many hacks for traveling cheap. I have traveled on a budget for years around the world and I have gone a long way on very little cash. So there's totally a way to travel. Even if you don't have a ton of money to do it, you just have to be smart about it. I hope these five tips helped you and I hope you do lots of traveling in 2024. I know I am looking forward to getting on the road and exploring more of the world. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you in the next one.